You're watching Ramping Up Your English. This is episode two, uh, actually segment two of episode 85. And we learned a few things in this chapter. We learned how people with baskets are able to heat their meals. We learned something about beliefs concerning a person's shadow. We'll share more from Indian tales in subsequent episodes. For now, be sure to remember this whole thing about a person's shadow. It'll be important in another section we'll share. Now, these stories follow the tradition of talking animals, a tradition reaching to fairly recent times. Let's add to the chronological walk we're taking through prehistoric times to the epic migration and subsequent developments of the first Americans. Our study of America's first people takes us back thousands of years. Let's watch this video that traces this epic migration across continents and years beyond counting. Following large game through the shoulders of massive ice sheets, the first Americans arrived on the continent as far back as 30,000 years ago. For millennia, these huge animals would sustain the hunters and gatherers who crossed the land bridge we call Beringia, leaving Asia for this new land, America. At some places, they left behind the tools of their hunting trade as they refined the manufacture of hunting points. The oldest human DNA was discovered by an archaeologist at Paisley Caves, proof that humans were here at least 14,000 years ago. What was the rest of the world doing 14,000 years ago? Many were following the same megafauna, living in family groups like these early Americans. Agriculture in the Golden Crescent had not happened yet. Neither had the ancient Egyptian Empire. Jesus of Nazareth was not yet born, nor were Buddha or Muhammad. Ancient China had not yet begun the lengthy dynasties that would vie for power there. The Roman Empire would not exist for thousands of years. Nor did any of these things exist when the Clovis Point was adopted far and wide in the Americas. The Folsom culture was also far in the past, at 11,000 years ago. No Roman Empire, no Christians, no London, no Paris. Early Americans truly discovered uninhabited areas, some ever moving into places where no one else had ever lived. While oceans were low due to a big freeze-up, some returned to Asia without the knowledge they had ever been somewhere else. As the planet warmed, more areas became habitable, new land available for these first Americans. By 10,000 years ago, sea levels rise enough to flood the Beringia land bridge. No more walking from Asia to America. Mammoths, mastodons, and huge bison still lived in the much wetter southwest, but soon they go extinct. Other animals are pursued with a development in technology, the use of the atlatl, at this time used in the southwest. About a thousand years later, around the year 7560 BC, an American we call the Kennewick Man died along the Columbia River, leaving one of the most complete early Native American skeletons. This is what Kennewick Man's face may have looked like in this reconstruction. 
DNA testing showed him to be an ancestor of the Nez Perce and other Columbia River groups. 9,000 years ago, deer, nuts, and grains became the main food source in the Northeast as the climate continued to warm. By 8,000 years ago, with the disappearance of mammoths, mastodons, and other megafauna, other animals emerged to thrive in this warming climate. For animals and people alike, living conditions changed drastically over a relatively short time, making adaptation essential. 8,000 years ago also saw early Americans hunting different animals, those in the north hunting caribou, while nowhere near the size of mammoths. Caribou grow to considerable size. Only 300 years later, the volcano Mount Mazama erupted, a cataclysmic event that resulted in today's Crater Lake. Millennia later, tribes in the area relate this event in their oral traditions. 7,000 years ago, early cultivation of food crops began in Mesoamerica. While Native Americans in the Pacific Northwest developed an economy based on salmon. The old copper culture around the Great Lakes used copper to make knives, axes, and other tools and pendants. And this is 2,000 years before ancient Egypt, way before ancient Greece, the Roman Empire, or the Reconquista of the Iberian Peninsula. There's a lot we don't know about these early Americans. What kind of thoughts did they have? What values did they hold? What kinds of religious beliefs and practices did they have? We'll never be able to ask them, but we can learn from their descendants. While the giant bison of the megafauna era had passed into extinction, its smaller but still large cousin continued to populate much of the continent. 5,500 years ago, tribal people had various means of hunting them. Head smashed in Buffalo Jump in Alberta, Canada is the site where buffalo were startled into a bunch and then stampeded to their death at the ledge. Survivors were clubbed by people waiting at the base of the cliff. 5,500 years ago, Indians in Louisiana began building mounds. Now the oldest of these discovered so far are at a site called Watson Break, located in the northeast segment of the state. The discovery and excavation of Watson Break has caused researchers to think again about earlier assumptions that only when people practice agriculture would they develop ceremonial and trade centers. Watson Break was constructed over centuries of time. The human-made earthen mounds, the oldest such complex in North America. Its makers were not farmers, but hunter-gatherers. Such complex construction indicates social complexity, capable of planning and contracting massive projects over many generations of time. When Watson Break was constructed, neither the Egyptian pyramids nor Stonehenge existed. Agriculture began in North America 5,000 years ago in what archaeologists call the Late Archaic Period. In the South, it was sunflowers and marsh elder. In the Northeast, it was amaranth. These were ground up as seeds to make flour. Meanwhile, in the Southwest, cultivation began of the three sisters, corn from Mesoamerica, beans, and squash. By now, there was an extensive trade network that saw copper in places far from the Great Lakes, that area where it was mined and processed, this system of trade apparently went on for thousands of years. When the Watson Brake Mounds were discovered and researched, the timeline for mound builder societies had to be reset. 
Until Watson breaks, the earliest mound builders were believed to be at Poverty Point, a site that's also in northeast Louisiana. The Poverty Point site was occupied from 4,000 years ago to around 3,000 years ago. As with Watson Brake 2,000 years earlier, Poverty Point's mounds were constructed over several generations. 400 years, that's 25 generations. The Poverty Point culture extended 100 miles across the Mississippi Delta and south to the Gulf of Mexico. The site was on the edge of the Mississippi River. Poverty Point was built and inhabited by hunter-gatherers, not farmers. Their food was acquired through fishing, gathering, and hunting. They lived on deer, small mammals, fish, turtles, nuts, fruits, and berries. Poverty Point Indians left millions of artifacts that have been recovered and studied by archaeologists. They include human figurines and instruments made from bone and imported rock. One unusual item is this weight for use on an atlatl. Poverty Point was built on Macon Ridge and covers over 400 acres. At a time when most Americans lived in small groups, Poverty Point had a considerable population described as the largest and most complex late archaic earthwork occupation and ceremonial site yet found in North America. This plaza area was ringed with pole structures marked with white barrels today, built it seems for gatherings. Poverty Point is a national monument and a world heritage site, started 5,500 years ago.